think that Ghost Notes was just this cool little fancy thing that only good drummers did. And I found out later on that Ghost Notes actually play a really important role in your drumming, both stylistically and mechanically. Ghost Notes serve a purpose. So I think every drummer should know how to play Ghost Notes. It's a very necessary skill um, as far as I'm concerned. And I'm just gonna show you two really simple exercises. It's actually just one exercise with a slight variation. So with this one exercise that I'm gonna show you, um, you're gonna be able to start to develop your ability to play Ghost Notes on your snare drum. Now, the whole idea about playing Ghost Notes is to be able to um, all you're doing really when you're, when you're playing ghost notes you're subdividing the bar there's a lot of rhythmic activity that happens between the quarter notes and you're just bringing some of those out on a, on a you know quieter level so the, uh, the tricky thing I guess when you're first learning how to play um, ghost notes with your sna whatever hand you play your snare with whether you're left handed or right handed the idea is to be able to play, you know, dynamic strokes, loud strokes up here, and then quieter strokes down here with the same hand. The tricky part comes when you're starting to develop your ability to do this because sometimes, or a lot of times actually, you'll have a loud stroke immediately following a quiet stroke and you're doing it with the same hand. So. There's a way that I'm going to show you. It's, it's not, really not that hard, but just to let you know, that's what happens when you're playing your snare. You got loud strokes, you got soft strokes, sometimes immediately following each other, and you have to be able to keep that separation happening with one hand. So that's um, that's what I'm going to show you how to do. So it's, there's a very simple sticking that uh, that I'm going to show you, and if you do this with practice over a couple of months. The ghost notes are going to sound sweet. So let's get into this. All right, so there's a really simple sticking that I'm going to show you that will help you to develop um, these ghost notes. And all it is really is just a string of, of uh, 16 notes, and there's eight of them. So the pattern is. Right, left, right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, left. Okay? So it's like that. All right. So, one thing that I sort of learned early on. When you're learning any kind of sticking pattern, especially when you start to apply to, to playing the drums, it always helps to have what I call a dominant hand. It's always a good idea, I think, to separate your hands and know what each one is doing. When you do that, you sort of develop a kind of rhythm and you'll hear, you'll hear what, what each hand is doing. So if you have a dominant hand, you can sort of almost emphasize the pattern that you're playing with that dominant hand, in which in my case is, is my right hand. So, you know, one way to do that is just to play the right hand on, a, on another uh, source to hear what the pattern is. Then you'll get that pattern inside of your skull, and it actually makes it easier to play. When you're playing it all on one surface, all your notes kind of sound the same. And it just all sounds like, you know, it might as well just be a single stroke with your eyes closed when you, when you think of it that way. So I'm going to play the pattern again, but this time I'm going to play the right hand on another surface, and you'll hear what your actual rhythmic pattern is that you're playing. So it's like this.
So that's it. I learn all of my rudiments this way. When you, when you learn to separate the hands and you start to play that pattern around the kit, it really makes it a lot easier to, to play. And you can get, it, for me anyway, it just makes it a little bit easier for me to get a little more creative with it. So that's a bit of a side tip. For now, this is what our pattern is. So now let's take this and start to construct this exercise for you. All right, so the fun part for me, uh, for learning any kind of sticking exercise, is taking it from the pad and moving it to the kit. Because now you can actually, you know, try to start to, to make some music out of this pattern. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you two different um, steps to this exercise. I'm gonna start with the hands. <clears throat> We're just gonna play the, um, the right hand on the right. We're gonna play the left hand on the snare. And the idea with, particularly with playing the snare drum, is you wanna to try to keep your, your soft strokes down here. And one thing that, uh, Somebody told me this once. I don't know if these guys actually do it. But one guy told me that uh, sometimes these drum corps drummers, when they're working on their lifts and their levels and stuff, they sort of think of uh, like an imaginary line, maybe an inch and a half or two inches off your snare drum. And they just try not to let the tip of the stick go past that imaginary line. It just kind of helps them to keep the soft strokes down a little bit more, to keep those notes a little bit quiet. So, first thing I'm going to do then is just use the hands. Right hand on the right, left hand on the snare. The second thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to go right into it because you'll get the point, is I'm going to bring the bass drum in. And the right hand is going to play exactly what the right foot is playing. So, these um, two, the right and the, and the bass drum, are going to be in sync. They're going to be playing exactly the same thing. And then the left hand is going to continue to play ghost notes on the snare. So that is going to sound like this. All right, so that's what that pattern is. Don't ever go past that point until you're comfortable doing it. There's no point in moving on, moving on beyond this until you're able to, to, to play that and have it sound smooth. The idea, of course, is to be able to work up to speed. And this is the part that's gonna train your, your left hand and your right hand to play at two different dynamic levels. Eventually when you when you bring that bass drum in, you're gonna be playing the bass drum in your right hand nice and strong, while your left hand is gonna be down here, like dynamically. You're gonna keep those notes with your left hand uh, nice and um, quiet. It's gonna be about half the volume as what your, uh, your right hand and your right foot are playing. So again, the idea is to be able to play this, work up to speed so that you can play it faster and still have the sound clean.
All right, so now that you got that down and you're able to play that nice and smooth, we'll back up the, the tempo a little bit and we're gonna move on to the next step. So this is gonna be an exercise for the left hand. And what you're gonna start to do is integrate a backbeat inside of this pattern that we're playing. So if we're counting one, two, three, four, you wanna be able to hit that two and four and just add that backbeat and just turn it into a little bit of a, of a groove. Now, <clears throat> the tricky thing about doing this, because when you're playing ghost notes on your snare, it involves, typically involves playing um, loud strokes and soft strokes with one hand. And I guess the, uh, the, the tricky part about that whole thing is that many times you'll have a really loud stroke immediately following a soft stroke, and you've got to be able to do that with one hand. Typically that is a pretty tricky thing to do, unless you're talking to me, because I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. So when I do this, when I'm playing ghost notes on the snare, and I didn't really um, think too much about how I was actually doing it until I stopped and analyzed what it was that I was doing. And I discovered that all it is is a series of taps and snaps. That's it. So for the quieter notes, I'm just tapping them out using a little bit of finger and a little bit of wrist. And for the louder strokes, it's a lightning quick snap of the wrist to get that louder stroke out. So that's all it is. It's just a really fast snap of the wrist. So you're tapping and you're snapping. That's it. Once you get used to doing that, then everything becomes really easy. So the next thing is to go back to the original exercise um, and play that pattern. But we're going to add that two and four backbeat on the snare drum. So that is going to sound like this. One, two, And then of course, you wanna be able to get that to the point where you can work it up to speed and, and just play just a moderate tempo type of groove using that same idea. When you start out slow, you're working out the mechanics. The muscles are kind of learning what they have to do to make that happen. That's why it's important to start out slow. Once you speed it up, the muscles already know what to do and it's gonna sound clean when you speed it up. So, now that you got that far, that's great. The next thing that we're gonna do, and this is a really important part of being able to just complete this exercise, because playing ghost notes also involves uh, a certain level of coordination between your left hand 
and your right hand. You want to be able to separate the two so that one can do one thing and the other can do another thing and without having uh, a problem. So this is more of a sort of an advanced step up to this exercise and this is more of a um, somewhat of a, uh, of a coordination type exercise for your, uh, for your two hands and I guess your right foot as well. And all that really involves is playing that same pattern again but right now our right foot and our right hand are playing the exact same thing. What we're going to do with the right hand is we're going to switch to just playing quarter notes and keeping everything else the same. So your bass drum is going to continue to play that pattern that the right hand was playing originally and you're still going to be um, you know playing that uh, that left hand pattern on the snare along with that back beat, but you're gonna be playing quarter notes with the, uh, with the right hand. This is gonna take a little bit of time, especially when you start working on getting it to sound clean and sharp, but it will happen. It's all muscle memory, it's just all muscle memory. Once your muscles learn what to do, then everything becomes easy, and then like, once you speed it up, it still sounds clean. That's why it's always important not to just rush into something too fast. Like your muscles need time to be able to learn what to do. So that's what we're going to do now. I'm going to play the same pattern, but um, I'm going to switch to playing quarter notes with, um, with the right hand. So I'll start out by playing the original pattern, and then I'll just switch right to playing quarters with the right hand. That is a really important part of this exercise because once you get that separation happening between the left hand and the right hand and the right foot, then um, everything just becomes easier and a little more fluid to play because typically you wouldn't, unless you're playing, unless you're trying to amp up a particular section of a song, you typically wouldn't be playing the right hand and the right foot a pattern that busy at the same time. It would just sound like it's too much. You want to be able to keep a pulse happening with the right hand when you're doing that kind of thing. So <clears throat> that right there is a, is, a, is a really good and important variation of this exercise is to be able to, um, to keep that pattern going while playing quarter notes on, uh, on the ride. And then as with everything else, you slowly start to work your speed up until you can play it faster and still have it sound clean. Here's a little tip that you can use when you're, um, when you're learning how to play your ghost notes and, and even after you learn them and you just want to be able to um, just apply this to your, your normal playing. Something that you might not know about your snare drum is um, the way this thing is kind of put together. It just sort of happens this way, but your snare drum typically is the loudest at the very center of the drum. Directly over the snare wires is where you get the most volume out of your snare drum. The further you move towards the edge, 
the quieter it gets. So I can play like this. And as I move towards the center of the drum, you'll hear it just gradually and automatically get louder. So, knowing this now, if you want to get even more separation when you're playing your ghost notes, just um, play the snare closer to the edge and uh, your ghost notes will become even quieter um, the further you get towards the edge. So that's something that you can, if you want to work that in while you're learning how to do this. Um, it's cool because it's, it's easier that way because you don't necessarily have to try to control your volume so much if you're used to playing your drum right in the center. If you try to keep your ghost notes a little bit closer to the edge of the snare, they're automatically going to be a little bit quieter. So that's just a, a cool little uh, tip to keep in mind, I guess, when you're learning how to play ghost notes on your snare. Another cool thing that we can add to this exercise is uh, we can start to add a drag to the pattern. Typically when you're playing, especially with funk grooves and stuff, a lot of times we don't just stick to playing just straight single taps. There's a lot of drags that happen when you're playing funk grooves and it's just a cool tasty little thing that you can do. So the way to, uh, to get used to doing this is, is actually really simple. Um, all you're going to do is you're going to insert a drag before beats one and beats three. You're going to play exactly the same pattern as we did before. Um, and in this particular case, you want to start out again by playing the right hand and the right foot, keeping them sync, play the same thing with those two. And just add a drag between beats one and beats three. And that would sound like